What's up everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're putting a new valve cover on the GTI. These valve covers do fail in a number of different ways. The most common is actually just leaking from the gasket. If that's what you're experiencing, replacing just the gasket only is the best approach. There's a couple of other ways that these fail. They crack right where the oil fill cap mounts to. Sometimes people like to tighten the PCV valve up too much and it'll strip out the holes for the screws. And the one that's probably the least common but can be the most problematic with the car is actually cracking inside or underneath the valve cover. The valve cover is part of the PCV system and any cracks or anything on the inside can disrupt the PCV and cause system rich, system lean faults, extra oil consumption, and a whole bunch more. So this is a super easy DIY, and of course, big ups to FCP Euro, who made this entire project possible and uh, supplied the parts for this job. So check them out. I'll put links to everything we're gonna use today and the valve cover down in the description. Because this engine was used in a number of different cars, Opening up the hood may look a little different. Some will have this noise pipe here on the side. This doesn't affect the job in any way. First thing we need to do is remove the engine cover. Pop all four ignition coils up. I usually use something like a screwdriver or a pry bar to gently lift them up. These are plastic, so you wanna be really careful not to break them. Once they're up and loose, we can go ahead and disconnect them. This is probably going to be the most delicate part of this entire job. These are extremely fragile and like to break just by looking at them wrong. The best way to attempt to remove these without breaking them is to push the connector into the coil, pull the tab, and gently pull it out. Don't try and remove it all the way from the ignition coil before you have all four disconnected. Otherwise, you run the risk of breaking the loom. Follow the same procedure for the other connectors, and now take the loom and push it to the back of the engine. Now that we have all four coils up and disconnected, we can go ahead and remove them. It's not gonna matter where they go back, but if you'd like to, you can number them at the top and put them back where they came from. Next, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the lines to the PCV valve. This one is usually pretty straightforward. We squeeze the neural part at 12 and six o'clock, and slide it off. And what I usually do is I don't take the other side off, I'll just rotate it around and out of the way. The fitting that comes from the primary oil separator can be a little bit trickier. There's four tabs that have to be removed on it, which means you usually have to do a series of squeezing and taking a pocket screwdriver to push the lock over the lip. This one's pretty broken, so it's gonna be extra easy to take off. But there are four tabs that will hold it in place. This one even has a seal that's all boogered up. There's one more line that needs to be disconnected located right between the oil fill cap and the PCV valve. Again, this one is broken on our car, but there's also two tabs that hold it in. Just like on that first hose we pulled off, squeeze it at 12 o'clock and six o'clock and that'll allow the tabs to clear and we can pull it right off. Next, we're going to remove the two T30s that attach the timing cover to the valve cover. Before we start taking all the bolts off for the valve cover, you'll notice there's a ton of debris on top of it. I like to take some compressed air and just blow that off so none of this stuff falls down into our cylinder head. Next, we're going to loosen all of these T30s. These bolts are captive and held in with the valve cover gasket, so they're not gonna come all the way out. That being said, they can still come out, so be really careful as we're removing the valve cover that you don't drop them down into the cylinder head. When loosening these, we wanna start from the outside and work our way in. There are 14 of these in total. Next, we're gonna take the clamps off the two hoses in the back. This is actually not the correct clamp. It may be a crimp clamp like this style, so you might have to cut it rather than using hose clamp pliers. But since this is what's on there, it's what we're gonna use. We'll slide that back. If you're not able to get your hose clamps onto the smaller one, take a pair of needle nose pliers and you can use those to push it back. Just be careful that it doesn't fall all the way back. Next, what I like to do is take a pick and loosen up the hoses a little bit. This one looks like it's ripped, so this should come off pretty easily. And we'll do the same thing for the larger one. Once we have all of our bolts loose and our hoses disconnected or loose, take our small pry bar and gently pry the valve cover up. Now from here, what we can do is we can pull it forward towards the front of the car, and that should release the hoses in the back. If you need some extra persuasion, this is when our pick does another really great job. We can just push the hoses off 
and remove our valve cover. Once our valve cover is off the car, we can take the PCV valve off. It's held on with four T25s. Notice that our screws are a little bit mismatched. If you can address that cool, we're just gonna go ahead and put them back in. If you're just doing gaskets, make sure you do the gasket for the PCV valve and the valve cover. To replace the gasket's pretty simple. Just pull it out of its well and install the new one. See these holes right here are what hold the screws in for the valve cover. And you just simply push it back into its channel and make sure it's properly seated. For us, we're actually done with this one minus taking the oil fill cap off. There is a gasket on this oil fill cap. Not a bad idea to replace it while we're doing these other gaskets or doing a new valve cover. Here we have our new valve cover. Let's go ahead and put our PCV valve on it. This is a great opportunity to put a new one on. This is a pretty common failing part. I'm just gonna start these screws. You can run them all the way in if you want to at this point in time, but I like to start them and tighten them down when the valve cover is installed. To give you an idea of how tight these are, the torque spec is four Newton meters, so you don't have to tighten it very tight. Before putting our valve cover back on, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and clean the cam bridge. Make sure there's no oil or debris on the mating surface for the valve cover. Don't forget to clean over the spark plug wells. Before putting our valve cover on, put a little lubricant on these two fittings at the back of the valve cover where we pulled the hoses off. That'll make the hoses go on quite a bit easier. We're gonna take our valve cover and we're gonna go ahead and start the hoses on the fittings as best we can. Next, we just work our valve cover down. Make sure your oil separator hose and your timing cover are clear, and then just rock it down. Then I like to go around and just push the screws, make sure they're in the wells for the screws. When we tighten them, we're gonna tighten them in stages. You can go through and tighten each one of these a little bit by hand if you want, just to make sure it's threaded properly and avoid any cross threading. What I mean by tightening in stages, we're gonna tighten all of them a little bit, all of them a little bit again, and then go back and torque them. We also wanna make sure we follow the correct torque sequence, starting in the very center and working our way out. And we'll come back and torque them to 10 Newton meters, following the same sequence. Next, we'll put our hoses back on. We'll go ahead and tighten down our PCV valve. Torque this to four Newton meters. Go ahead and put your hoses back on. Put your oil fill cap on. We need to put our bolts back in for our upper timing cover. These bolts do call to put some blue thread locker on them. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys whether you wanna do that or not. I don't love the idea of thread locker on these, but that's what the repair manual calls for. And these also get torqued to 10 Newton meters. Next, we're gonna take our ignition coils and just drop them down into the spark plug wells. Pull our wire loom up from the back. We wanna plug them all in, give the harness a tug, make sure they're in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly tap them down together. Now that we have the valve cover replaced and everything secured, go ahead and spend a few minutes and clean any oil, residue, or debris off the area to make it look nice and clean in addition to having a nice fresh valve cover. All that's left, put the engine cover back on, start the car, get it up to temp, and make sure that you don't have any leaks in the area that we just worked on. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Always appreciate that. Big ups to FCP Euro for helping me out with this project. Links to all that, as well as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat are down below. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Happy Mark V repairing, and I will see you again next time.